Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borgen. This is going to be the Dow at Stars trade deadline, great analysis and recap, and also look ahead to the rest of the season for the Stars and what, of course, their two keys, I would say, will give will be to round out this season as they try to make it to the postseason, of course, where right now, if we look at the standings before we get into the trades, the Dallas Stars are right above the Vegas Golden Knights at a point five eight nine. Uh, win percentage um, with 73 points to 72 for the Vegas Golden Knights. They're in the second wild card spot right now. The Dallas Stars are. Now, <clears throat> this season, they have been an inconsistent bunch, but they have been a team that's become a consistent bunch at the times when you need it the most. And they have been away now. They got the record almost back to 500 at 14, 16, and 2, which has been a big bugaboo, and they've been great at home at 21, 8, and 1. So they started to play better away and have played great at home. Obviously, that's going to help them get exactly where they want to get to, which is the postseason. If Vegas keeps having this faltering and you also can't count the Jets or Vancouver out yet, Anaheim's going to need more of a miracle now back at 65 points with a point four nine two. And from the moves they obviously made, they know that they're a team that's not really pushing for it this year. But... When it comes to those other teams, they all have a chance. So Dallas still needs to keep their ante up. So let's take a look at what they did at the deadline to try to be able to help themselves out. Well, the Dallas Stars, led by Jim Neal and, of course, um, Rick Bonus, who started doing very good and got the interim job and then has latched on and hung on to it since, he's been getting great play out of a goaltender that I adore, I love, in Jake Ottinger this season. And he's also got good play out of Braden Holpe in 24 games, who just happens to be week-to-week, week, unfortunately with an injury, where he's actually was at first a veteran. He questioned why did they necessarily bring in Braden Holpe when they had Jake Ottinger, and they still had Hadobin, wasn't struggling. Now he's injured again, but he wasn't struggling uh, big time uh, last season. So you also had him, but then... When he came in, he fits so swimmingly, those questions went away immediately, and Braden Holtby played well as a 1B at very least, and then Audie's really stepped up as the 1A this year, and now you got Scott Wedgwood, who really stepped up for the Arizona Coyotes down there as a 1B type goaltender that ended up becoming there just by necessity, a goaltender that mixed in with Kirill Vizmelka as Vizmelka continues to develop, but Vizmelka then, in the last couple weeks, <clears throat> with Scott Wedgwood, I uh, was starting to play like similar, not to the same. Off the when he first came in, he had a couple really good games. Of starting, you're never going to play that high, high, but started playing better. So then Dallas was able to get Scott Wedgwood, which I think was a great pickup because Wedgwood's going to become your third string goaltender, which is what he's been most of his career. Once Braden Holpe comes back, unless if he lights the world on fire, and then you then have still three really good goaltenders, and Wedgwood will just stay active. So either way, this is a perfect thing, and you only gave up a fourth for him. So either way, that's perfect, because Ottinger, I love. I think he's going to be one of the best goalies in this league as time continues to go on. Uh, Scott Wedgwood, <clears throat> uh, he's a, just a perfect third stringer that has now showed that he could be more than that this year with the Coyotes and also at times with the Devils. And then Vladislav Nemesnikov is a good third-line producing a guy that can skate, a guy that's got better, realized he had to harness his tools a little bit more on his own end of the puck as well, rather than just in the offensive zone. So definitely has improved in that from, from the start of his career to now, and also can produce at a third line level. I think Vladislav Nemesnikov is a good pickup for the start to add a lot more depth. So I think this team, did they do anything sexy? No, not really. But did they make the moves that they had to make in order to fit people into the team that can really help them stay in that wild card race? And then anybody has a shot, especially when you have a world beater like Jake Ottinger at only the age of 23. Look what Thatcher Demko gave the, a chance to to his team, obviously, in the bubble, in the Canucks. I mean, obviously, if it wasn't for him with that performance, that, that, that they wouldn't have had as good of a chance. So I think this team has the veterans. And also, my thing with Dallas is, I see guys that produce solidly producing much better in the playoffs because they've been there, done that. Like, Radulov has had a great season. I see him stepping up a lot more if they get in the postseason, in the postseason. Same with Jamie Benn has actually had a solid season, but I see him doing much better in the postseason. Marion Studenik, 
I've got the privilege of watching him. They claimed him on waivers. I had the privilege of watching him when he played for Binghampton, covering uh, Binghampton Devils games at the PPL Center uh, while doing stuff for Flyers and Gritty covering the Phantom. And he plays with a snarl to his game, even though he's not the biggest kid. To me, he profiles more for the playoffs uh, as he continues to develop and then will continue to get better in the regular season. Uh, Dennis Gurianov, I think, will have a solid postseason. And then Nemesnikov, I mean, now they have him on the second line, which makes sense because they have Marion Studenik as the third line um, guy as they rotating Kivaranta, Jacob Pedersen, and others as well. But I think this team is pretty well put together. you got veterans Joe Pavelski. you got Jason Robertson, Rupe Hintz on that first line, which is a killer first line, one of the top in the league. And then you have Nemesnikov, Segan, and Gurianov on your second line. That's a pretty good second line. Obviously not one of the top in the league. But a pretty good, solid second line. Then you got Studenik, Ben, and Radulov. Well, Studenik's perfect to have with those two veterans because he's trying to get his way into the league. But as a player, again, that I really enjoyed watching while covering him at the AHL level. And we'll see how he continues to progress in game 23, 24, 25, 26 at the NHL level. Michael Roffel, perfect. Their fourth line is also plus minus. It doesn't look that great this year. But in terms of guys on paper, <clears throat> I do really like their fourth line to show up in the postseason because Radis Fosca can obviously play with the jam. Michael Roffel ain't afraid of nobody. I've watched him play multitudes of times during his time here with the Flyers. And Luke Glendening and slot over. He's a solid faceoff guy. He's a solid guy at 200 feet. Um, I think in the postseason, this is one of those teams, similar to how they did two postseasons ago, <laughs> Uh, what the sexiest team in the regular season, but definitely has a really good chance if they're the team to get in because of Jake Ottinger. You now added more goaltending depth if, if Holpe stays injured with Wedgwood, who's done well this year. And you were able to bring in a guy like Nemesnikov when he really added to, had to add at least third-line level scoring and up that can be a swing Swiss Army guy, which is what Nemesnikov is as, uh, as um, evidence of him playing the second line right now. So I think this team is in a good spot. And I think they have a good chance that they make it. They just got to keep pushing the right bubbles each night in order to make it. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and please continue down below. Or above on each of these widgets to keep the channel going to 215 or more by the end of March.